Well, Chance, it's great to have you on the show. I'm super excited to get to know more about you and about Crossing Fire, your band, and kind of what went into the current single and all that good stuff. But first off, how is your day going? My day's going good. How's your day going? Oh, it's been a crazy one, but it's all good. It's all good, man, for sure. <laughs> so since this is your first time on the show and since you guys are a somewhat new band compared to the average band that we have on the show, give us just a little bit of backstory as to how Crossing Fire got started, you know, kind of where you guys came from and all that good stuff. So Crossing Fire started three years ago as a worship band. However, it was probably back in December of I'd say 2015. We got to play a couple shows at our church with the protests and some other bands, and our band kind of caught the bug. We started playing more shows up until probably last year. We last year we played our first big show near Gadsden, Alabama. Ever since then, this past year, it's just been a huge whirlwind of music and rock and roll. Nice. Very cool. Very cool. So what made you guys want to make the jump from being teens in a worship band, kind of playing at church and all that good stuff, to putting out music and seeing if you could get it on the radio? Well, I said it's kind of something that was bound to happen. All of us were, were raised in musical backgrounds. We all love music. Our parents at least had some sort of interest in playing music or did play an instrument ourselves. So for us, this what happened was as we started playing with some bands like I Am Sparry, Kiss, Elia, The Protest, there's a couple of local bands, this bands called Lights of Darkness and some other people. And we just play as an opener act for them and there was something thrilling about playing that concert, those concerts. So from there, we just proceeded to just be like, get more invested into our music and decide we all wanted this. Nice. Very cool. Very cool. Now, did you guys, when you were looking at making that transition, did you have a specific idea of kind of what kind of music you wanted to write, or was this just kind of a, a given for you? When we started writing, I think the main goal is just to write something that we all liked and then test the wars with it. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Now, uh, what what do you think was the biggest challenge about, I guess, starting to play live in front of, in front of bands that you know maybe you'd listened to before or bands that already had kind of an audience and and trying to to do that as opposed to just playing in front of maybe your church or, or people that you already knew i believe you just answered your own question there because we all admired a lot of the people that were going and touring and playing and after us and we and they would watch us so they were actually had their eyes on us and watching what we were doing i mean, i certainly know that i would get sick to my stomach so often before shows it was terrible Right. Yeah, no, and I I totally understand that. And it's funny because, you know, doing radio is kind of one of those weird things that people make some assumptions about because I'm used to sitting in a room more often than not by myself talking to people who can't see me, I can't see them, and, you know, if I mess up, you just keep going, and, and that's all great. But, you know, you put me with a microphone in front of a live crowd, I, I get a little nervous, too, so I, I understand. It's it's a bit of a different ball game, and it's also, of course, different for it to be people who um, maybe don't know you or don't feel obliged to be nice. Well, you know what? That's why I play guitar. I don't sing. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, that wouldn't help me any because I think the thing that gets me the most is is my hand tends to shake, and that would not help me much playing guitar at all if I was that nervous. So I, I feel you, man. Uh, I just mostly get the butterflies, which is painful, but it's but they all kind of dissolve away once I start playing my my instruments. All right. So what a lot of people may not know about Crossing Fire is that all of you guys are in high school. You're a much younger band than you usually hear on the radio. I think you know some bands do get started early, but usually you don't hear them on the radio. And usually when people are on the radio, all people can say is, oh, they're really young. Isn't it cool that they're a young band? But you guys seem to be doing a good job of of bringing music that's good, and then people figure out that you're a young band. But um, what have been the challenges of being a young band playing on kind of a, a national radio stage? Um, I'd say the biggest challenge for us is getting onto the national radio stage. You know, imagine you're young, and you're trying to send a message out saying, hey, we're so-and-so, we're a teenage band, so this and that. Doesn't that already sound like I like, just click? move past it's really is what it feels like to me because it's like to me trying to advertise a garage band in reality i know what our band has achieved especially in the past year has been amazing we've been super blessed about that but man that part right there just trying to promote ourselves helps just directly over you know and get into the right places is very difficult because you're trying to do it in such a way that doesn't sound like we just popped up a week ago Right. From up by his garage. Yeah, for sure. People, I guess, would assume, and rightly so, I guess, for on the average, that if you guys were a band and you were this young, that you would have just gotten started 
not too long ago. How long have you guys been playing together? Uh, we've been playing together for probably about three years now. Wow. Yeah, see, I mean, you know, there are bands that get signed who have been around for just a couple of months. I mean, mind you, that's not normal, but, you know, it does happen. And the fact that you guys have been around playing together for three years is kind of a, a pretty good well, amount of time. Well, we, I guess I should, I should say, we're playing before we became a, like Crossing Fires, you know, it today for probably we have about three years now. Right. For about two years now. It was about a year ago we decided, hey, you know what? Well, playing music is awesome. Let's do well, this for more than just our church. Right. Let's, let's start writing songs and stuff. And, you know, kind of did some of them where we're a more rocking hill song type thing. Where, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Totally. Totally. So you guys have got a song on the radio. It's charting nationally. You're doing well. You guys are still very young. What is it that you hope for for the future of Crossing Fire? Um, I know right now that we're in our earliest stages of songwriting, so we're hoping that that next EP is going to take off massively and hopefully experience even more success than can lay it down on even has come close to. But the festival season, of course, next year, we've got to start working for that. We're hoping to get onto more festivals next year, probably play more shows over the summer. And right now, just because we're in school, so we can't do as many shows ah, on the weekdays, of course. <laughs> Yes. Well, the great annoyance of high schoolers everywhere. <laughs> right, right. No, and I understand. I do. I do. And but uh, you know, don't discount that though. I mean, it does come in handy further down the road. And um, you know, I think if it you ask the does. average band who who had to do like homeschooling stuff on the road, oh man, that's got to. I mean, I was full disclosure. I was homeschooled almost my entire um, pre college. Uh, career as a student, if you will. And I can't yeah. imagine doing that on the road while thinking about playing shows and or writing music and maybe even possibly driving as well. I mean, that just sounds like a lot. Yeah, well, ironically that you say that, all of us had been in homeschool at one point or another. I was homeschooled, homeschooled for five years. Yeah. I decided to like public school just because I wanted to experience high school. Yeah. Um, our, our front girl and bass player, they those two are sisters. They started going to high school this year, and our drummers start as a recently doing in post school part time just for the like first two hours of the day. Oh, okay, interesting. That is interesting. Very nice. Very nice. So now, how does how does the songwriting process work for you guys? I mean, uh, how does that look when you guys are working on songs? Um, the songwriting process can be so different for each song, but. Generally speaking, the setting is about saying we're it'll be me and the front girl, my dad, the bass player, player their dad, potentially the drummer, and we're all sitting around a dining room table with two acoustic guitars. There's Google Google Docs open on our laptops, a couple pencils and paper out just for I don't know, just because it looks good and feels good. <laughs> it's <laughs> something tangible. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I I personally. No, I can both work on technology, but I use both because I see the conveniency in it. Yes, yes, yes. There is something handy about being able to write something down really fast. Yeah, but then we'll start coming up with melodies. And usually it starts off with somebody's rough draft of the song. I don't lay it down, start off with a poem that I had. It's probably two or three stanzas long. And whew, let's just say I'm glad we polished it off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was, dare say. It was not, it was not as good. As, it, as what it became. So, so and then we'll start writing melody. Of course, I have guitars on it, so I'll have guitar, start putting guitar parts, chords. Or maybe I'll start writing some cool guitar licks here and there. Bass parts will usually go with an acoustic first. And it's a lot of testing, trial and error, hoping stuff goes right. And then after two growing out, we may hopefully potentially have a verse and a half. Yeah. Well, hey, I mean, if if you're making that kind of progress, I would say on the whole, that's probably not too bad or far off. So I think you're doing pretty good, to be sure. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, now, since we've talked all this time and we've kind of alluded to the song, um, let's talk about the current single. I mean, tell us about the, the track Lay It Down and kind of what the meaning is and kind of what went into that song, aside from it being kind of a, a rough draft at the, at the, you know, kind of a rough draft poem at the beginning. Yeah, so Lay It Down was a really... The interesting song here really close to home for us because we're, of course, as you know, we're all going through high school. I've been going through public school for, well, for about two years longer than the other two have, but we started writing this about a friend who said they, that she'd been cutting herself. Mm -hmm. And so I wrote this poem, as I said earlier. Golly, it was something else. And while 
and so essentially it's just saying and then that put down everything before God and so we and then we realized it wasn't just her, it was everybody. You know, it was like Solomon talking about in Ecclesiastes, I seen everything under the sun and, and it's all meaningless. Everybody had that attitude, you know, sad and disheartening. So we took it from just about a friend of ours who was cutting yourself to anybody having their whatever issues they had. I wanted to band members to struggle with something that we've had to lay down before God. Right. Yeah, for sure. Do you think that, and, and I know this is kind of a weird question, I guess, have people come up to you and, and feel like from what they've said to you about maybe a reaction to that song that they, that they get it and it's meaningful? Well, I mean, they may not know the specific person, but we're, we're trying to write a song that applies to everybody. No matter right, right, right. I, I just meant was. meaningful to them, like where they're at. Yes, of, yes, of course. And that's exactly what we've gotten. We've gotten it from, from Christians, from atheists. And it's been so amazing, so joyful to see that kind of reaction from people. It's Again, we're all teenagers, so it's pretty great for not only the resume, but for, for us personally. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah, I think that that's fantastic, man. Uh, so where do you guys feel like you are in the process? I know that through the email conversations we had had before and, and, and a little bit before the interview started, maybe even some of what people have already heard, but that you guys are working on new music, planning on trying to do a new EP in the and hopefully the near future. How far along would you say you are in that process at this point? Imagine a drawing of a person. Okay. You have a stick figure. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Oh, so it's just about you done. Know, <laughs> the vision is there. We have maybe frameworks that we're going around. And we have multiple of those those frameworks. So the idea is there. The message that we want to give for multiple songs is there. We just have to flesh it out into what will eventually be the masterpiece. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, hey, I mean, you know, you got to start somewhere, right? I mean, it's not like everyone walks uh-huh. in and like, okay, well, this is exactly the way it's going to be. And this is a first draft. So, I mean, I would be worried about you if that was what you thought was going on. So it's good to know that at least you guys are being realistic about it. So that's good. Yeah. Is there anything else that you want to uh, to kind of get out there that you want people to know either about you personally or the band that, that we haven't touched on thus far? Um, I just want to talk about the fact that, guys, I don't know how old some of you guys are, but we're all teenagers. I'm an honor student. Some of us are not as, quote, unquote, intelligent in that sense. But the thing is, God uses us for our strengths. You know, I started off really into blues and some rock. Like our two, our front girl and rhythm bassist was, they had everything under them. They had metal, they had pedal, they had hard rock. Our drum was into classic rock. We, Interesting. And God brought us all together for his matchful purpose, which was to create music and serve him. And so many, I believe that there's just certain things that cannot happen without God. Had We've all had to endure challenges, especially those challenges being like balancing school and music, but God's pulled us through it. And may, maybe our situation is kind of different. Maybe. Yours is not school and music. Maybe it's, I don't know, you've got a job helping your relationship in your youth group or something. We can understand that. But the point of our song, Lay It Down, is whatever your struggles you have, put them before God. He will help you. He'll not only help you, but he'll carry them for you. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Well, there is one last thing that I try to ask everybody, and uh, I'm going to ask you as well, because I'm not going to leave you out, man. Um, what would All you right, say? Awesome. What would you say... Despite the fact that you're that you're in a rock band, you're still in high school, you're you're doing a lot of really cool stuff already. But what would you say for you is the least rock and roll thing about you? The least rock and roll thing, boy. <laughs> I'm a huge reader, actually, and not only am I a huge reader, I don't listen to just about anything. I confess, I like One Direction, Justin Bieber. I I don't like just them. I like John Mayer. I listen to. Just about anything as long as I like songwriting to it. Awesome. Well, hey, you know what? I think that 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 specific part of it anyway is probably good for you as a musician because there are too many people, I think, who who think, you know, it's like, well, I need to listen to this because this is what I play. And if I'm not listening to this, then somehow I'm I'm doing a disservice, no. which I think is the exact opposite. I think you can learn something from just about any genre of music as long as, like you said, the songwriting is good. And even if you're just picking up something from the hookiness of something that otherwise isn't all that great, you're learning something. And I think that's important. Yeah, and that's the, that's the main goal when I'm, when I'm listening to stuff. I mean, and one thing I do really hate, and this is something from a past guitar teacher long, a while ago, is he tries not to be a hater because they clearly do something right. You know, that's certainly a generalized term. I mean, it's true. People are listening to music for a reason. Right. There's something about it, whether it be in the beat or something that they like. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Well, cool deal. Well, dude, thank you so much for, for taking the time to uh, 
to, to hang out with us and let people get to know you. And I hope that the future endeavors go well. And hopefully this will not be the last time we see you guys on a chart, whether it be this one or a different one. And, uh, dude, we wish you guys, all of you, all the best. And, uh, hopefully we'll get a chance to do this again soon. Thank you. Can't wait.